Hi everyone. In the previous video, we enabled co-management for a couple of pilot workloads. We went for compliance policies and Windows Update for Business policies. So in this video, we're going to test out Windows Update for Business by enabling it for our co-managed devices. Now in Config Manager, managing updates was, well, setting it up was, was not a trivial thing to do. So you needed a a software update point to work with WSUS to download the metadata for the updates that you wanted to deploy. You needed an ADR, an automatic deployment rule, to pull down the right updates to your package so that you could stage it on your distribution point. And then once you'd staged it on the distribution point, you needed to create a deployment for that update and then decide who was going to receive that update by putting the computer in a collection and then they would receive the update. If you'd like me to do a video on that topic, please let me know in the comments. If you're not, if you can, if you're not interested, if no one's interested, I'm not going to bother because there's a much better way to do it via Intune and via Windows Update for Business. So let's take a look at that. Let's take a quick look at my client. So here's my client. We have a version number of 19042.985, and I happen to know that is the May Windows 10 update, so the May 11 Windows 10 update. So last month, which means there should be a newer version available to this computer. At the moment, Windows Update for Business isn't configured for this computer. I'm going to take a look at the uh, update section, see what it says. So it says you're, um, you're up to date, which is interesting because technically I shouldn't be. And it says some settings are managed by your organization and it says MDM has disabled check for updates by user, disabled pause updates by user, all that kind of thing. Okay, interesting. So let's take a look at how we can change that and manage some of our updates. Oh, interestingly, actually, we've got a feature update for Windows 10 here available to the user. This is a corporate device. Remember, this is a, a corporate user. Uh, Lucy.tester and it's a, a domain join device managed by Intune. So this feature update offer is an interesting concept to have there when you don't have a, a policy in place. Okay, so let's just configure this in Intune then. So head over to my Intune portal. And if we head to devices and then Windows 10 update rings. I'm going to create a profile because there is not a profile just yet. And this profile is going to be my first ring, my first uh, set of testers to receive updates. So I need it to be really quick, I need it to be instant really. As soon as the updates are released, I want these testers to receive the update and start testing. So I'm going to call it current update ring one first look testers. I'm going to choose next. And then I want it to be for the semi-annual channel because that's the channel that I'm going to be using within my normal user base. And we want to allow Microsoft product updates and Windows drivers to be included in this. So if there are any drivers that are available with you know security related patches, then they'll be, they'll be included in this. Quality update deferral period, we're going to go with zero. So I want this to be instant. I don't want it to be a deferral period for this ring at all. And the feature update deferral period is also zero. Now for this ring, I really don't want these computers to be updating to the latest feature update as soon as it's available. I want these testers to be testing my current channel, the one I'm using for the rest of my estate. So I'm going to set this to the maximum of 365 days so that computers in this ring stay with the current version of my of, of my of my Windows 10 build. So in this ring I really don't want my computers to be updating to the latest feature update when users are meant to be testing my current feature update, but I'm going to leave this set to zero and I'll show you a way later on to manage that setting. The feature update update uninstall period is set to 10, but that's fine for this. I'm not I'm not planning to use this group for for that.
So as this is our immediate test group, the guys in this group, the guys and girls in this group, will know that they're meant to be testing as soon as possible. So I'm going to set this to auto install and reboot without end user control. So we get that we get that happening as soon as possible. We're going to allow reach restart checks, and that will essentially check that the 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 user isn't present. The uh, the device isn't running a PowerPoint presentation, they're not in full screen mode, they're not in a Teams call, they're not playing a computer game, and they've got enough battery to complete that reboot. We will allow the user to pause Windows updates and uh, also disable that check for, um, for, for Windows updates. So we're going to give this user a few hours to uh, to, to be aware of the reboot, we're going to give them four hours uh, and then they can dismiss that um, that notification and then in the final 15 minutes we're going to give them a, a non-dismissible warning so that they know it's going to happen. Also for quality updates I really don't want them to have any chance to um, to not install this, I'm going to give them a deferral period of two days, a deadline of, of two days, sorry and uh, feature update, I'm not using this for feature updates, so we're going to go with 30 and zero grace period. Okay, so choose next and that's pretty much it actually, we've, we've configured everything we need to for this ring, so I'm going to choose next and this is the setting that we've got set, I'll choose create and now I need to put a computer in a group which will receive this, so we'll do that in a second. So if we head over to groups you can either create a group on premise and let it synchronize up to AD, uh, Azure AD, or you can create a group in Azure AD. I want to create the group in Azure AD because it's easier to do. And it's going to be my current update ring one first look testers. Because this is a test group, I'm going to make it assigned rather than dynamic. I don't need it to update automatically. I'm, I'm quite comfortable with enabling it through this. And we're going to choose some members for it. So my so my computer name is this. So I'm going to add that computer to the group and choose create. And then we're going to head back over to devices, Windows 10 update rings, choose this, properties, scroll right to the bottom and choose assignments, click edit, and add that group in that we've just created. So it was called current. Update ring one, first log testers, and we'll choose select, review and save, and then save. So that's our group created. That will configure the settings we want on our device. So let's take a look what happens on the client when we do a sync. Okay, so taking a look at our update and security section, let's take a look at what it's doing here. Uh, okay, so it's it's downloading a feature update to 21H1, and uh, I recall I didn't show you how to disable the immediate installation of um, of updates did I? So let's see if we can do that quickly. So in our Windows 10 update ring we want to pause feature updates. Now I don't know if that's going to pause now, given that it's already received the policy to to install it, because it's already started to download it, this is meant as a sort of pause, um, a general pause, but let's see how quick it is. It's downloaded with 63%. Let's see if I can catch that in time. Head over to the done a sync now, so we'll head over to the update section and see if it's still downloading that. Still downloading, um, which kind of makes sense. We'll just give it a few more seconds and see if it receives the policy to not. What we can do is look at the configured policies here to see what we've actually got set, um, which is auto install and restart at a specified time with no restrictions, which is about right. Disable pause by user. Let's just check. Uh, yep, yeah, I can't pause it. Uh, that's fine. So, what else have we got? Yep, yeah, that pretty much looks like the stuff I set. 
So that's good, that's all been received. Bit worried that it's going to install this in a few seconds though. Don't really want it to, but we might find that it does, and then that'll be fine. So it's finished downloading it. This might turn into a video about how to deploy a feature update via Windows Update for Business, which would be quite cool. Okay, so just in time, we have a little pause symbol just here. And I assume that is referring to the feature update pause that I've put in place. So, so yeah, just in the nick of time, we have a, a pause on the feature update there. I don't believe I just paused the quality update, so that should still have uh, installs. Let's just check what we've got for the Windows version. Still got 985, so I didn't see that install, but it's very possible it did it without me seeing. Um, no, we still got this quality update for, uh, for me, so that's not happened yet. Perhaps it was uh, focusing on the feature update, given that that would be that would include the the uh, the June update. So yeah, let's give this uh, another sync. Okay, that's done. Head back into update security, and still not it's not quite finished uh, deciding what it's going to do with its updates. So uh, give it a reboot. Okay, so bad news for my thoughts that choosing to pause the installation of the updates at the last second would actually prevent it from installing because here it is installing it anyway. Um, so there you go, that's how easy it is to deploy a feature update via Windows Update for Business. Um, in a few moments we'll see that it's upgraded to 21H1. Uh, I'm going to leave this in the video because I've, I've done it now. So let's let's just change the change the strategy here. Um, but you know that was the point. So we've we've shown just how easy it is to deploy Windows updates via Windows Update for Business and con and control that via Intune without all the complexity you get from Config Manager. And yeah, you might say complexity equals control, but I wasn't so silly about the specifying zeros on the deferral period then this I wouldn't have got myself into this mess so yeah this is um a good demonstration of the power of Windows Update for Business hopefully okay so that took a little while to install uh, the the lights kind of fading on me right now but we have a, a restart window here and it's asking me to um, it's asking me to restart, so I'll, I'll go ahead and restart and see that this installs 21H1 and proves at least that you can install a feature update via Windows Update for Business configured via Intune. Okay, so we're on 21H1 with the, let's just check, with the 8th of June patch. 8th of June would be the second Tuesday of June. So yeah, we are running the latest feature update with the latest security update without too much effort, a little bit of waiting, maybe half an hour or so. Uh, but yeah, that's that seems to have worked. Okay, so not exactly how I planned it, but I've demonstrated that you can configure Windows Update for Business via Intune to deliver security updates and feature updates. In this video I only managed to do the feature update which I wasn't hoping to do but there you go. In the next video we're going to take a look at servicing Microsoft 365 apps via Intune. If you've liked this video please like and subscribe and perhaps leave a comment. The comments are great. We're creating content as quickly as we can. Look out for the next video on Tuesday. See you next time.